Hey everyone, welcome to my videos on practical Python programming. I did a series of videos a while back on encryption with Python. And one question that kept coming up from that series was how to encrypt the file with a password. In the series, we generated a random key and saved it for encrypting and decrypting our files. This video is going to show you how to generate an encryption key with a password so that you don't need to save the key. You can simply run the program again to generate the same key using the same password and use it over and over again to encrypt and decrypt your files. As long as you have the app to generate the key and you remember your password, you're all set. To encrypt with a password, the code is similar to what we used earlier in part one of my encryption series, how to encrypt the file. We're still using the cryptography library. The cryptography library is broken into two parts first one is the easy, straightforward, canned part that we used the last time. But to use a password, we have to use the second part, which is what they call the uh, hazmat or the primitives. And it's a little scarier, um, a little more contr um, control, a little more in-depth understanding of encryption required. But for the good news is for our purposes here, it only means that we have to install a few extra libraries. And that's what I'm doing here. And in essence, these libraries are here to help us generate a key using our password and other inputs to securely encrypt with symmetric encryption. So now that we have the libraries installed, we want to generate our password. So we'll create an empty variable here and take the input from the user for the password. And then we'll copy that password to a variable called password and we'll encode it uh, with into bytes. What we want to do next here is create what's called a salt. A salt is additional um, code that's jumbled up with our password to make it a more secure key. So even if we pick a weak password, uh, it'll be difficult to decipher what the password is based on the encrypted code. So working backwards with brute force is going to be different, difficult. So a salt is a technique that's used to jumble that up and make it more difficult. So we need to run a routine to generate a salt. There are several ways of doing this. You can open up idle and, and run it in idle, or you can run it in another window. The way I like to do it is in the Python console right at the bottom of PyCharm. So this is a quick and easy way to generate a salt. We just import the OS module, and then we run the OS urandom utility that will generate a valid salt for us. And this is the code that's in bytes. That's what to be, and we copy that, and we use our mysalt variable to copy that in. We have our two main inputs now, the password and the salt. So now we're going to create the KDF, which is the key derivation function. And this is a cryptographic function that uses pseudorandom variables to create encryption keys. And the variables in our case are the password and the salt. And this is getting into the weeds of cryptography and we don't need to do it. But in essence, what we're doing here is we're writing a small function to generate the keys that we can use for our symmetric encryption. The inputs in the KDF include the, uh, the algorithm and the length, which is 32. The algorithm is SHA-256. Um, the iterations are 100,000. And we're also using the default backend from the cryptographic uh, class. And the salt will be the one that we created earlier with our uh, urandom utility. And the final step after the KDF is that we'll generate the key using the base64 encoder and the derive function out of the um, cryptographic library, which will derive based on the KDF and the password. We should be able to run this now to see if we get any errors. Looks good. Put in our password. And it's okay. So we should print out the key as well to make sure that we do get a valid key. And it is in byte form. That's uh, okay. But we, when we want to copy the key in to encrypt, we should get rid of the, the B and the um, commas. So we'll uh, decode it 
and we should get just the, the key itself. And there it is. Now we have an encryption key that's generated with our password. This key will always be the same if we uh, keep the same password. If we change the password, then we'll have a different key. So what this means in essence is that you don't have to save the key. As long as you have this program, you can generate the same key anytime. So you can encrypt the file with this key. And as long as you remember the password, you'll always be able to generate the key to decrypt it. So let's make sure it actually works now. We go back to the uh, F encrypt, the file encrypt that we did for the um, part one of my encryption series. I'm just going to change the name of this file because uh, when the encryption is at the end, you lose the file association with it. It's just a pet peeve. Uh, so we can uh, remove, we can change the open to input. We don't need to open up a file anymore. So we can just put the input in here and ask the user to enter the key that they generated with their password in our original app. We can delete the second line. We don't need that anymore. Uh, we'll change that extension as well. Now we're going to run this and ask the user to paste in their key that they generated. And that should encrypt the file, the secret Excel file. And it looks like it finished. It did create the file and the file is unreadable. So now we're going to delete the original file. So now we have to decrypt it. So we go to the decryption program from our first lesson. And again, as some minor changes, we don't need to read in the key. We have our key and we can generate this key at any time, like I said earlier, as long as we have the password. So we'll take input from the user again to get the decryption key. Just change the name of the file. If we run this, we should decrypt and get our original Excel file, our super secret Excel file back. Uh, we insert the same key and there's the file it's created. We double click on that and we're back to our original file. This is the basics of creating a symmetric key with a password. You can use other libraries to accomplish this too, but you can also get a lot done with what you have here. So I'll put these files on my GitHub repository, Symmetric Encryption, and I hope to see you all soon again, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.